I'm Gary Tamar. I'm delighted to be joined by Women's Under 17's manager James Scott. James, um, the qualifying couldn't have gone better for you, but you had to wait your time to get there, didn't you, with COVID and everything else? Yeah, like, I mean, look, uh, I think it's been 18 months really without football. So, look, to get back to football and, and, and to be able to go to Norway um, was, was just fantastic. Like, you know, and, and you know, really appreciate of everyone that, uh, you know, the work behind the scenes and so on to make that possible. Um, yeah, so it was, look, it was a really good um, qualifying round. We were very, very happy um, to top the group, like, and give us a good position going into 2022. Because before that, you kind of, you had a stop-start period, didn't you, where it looked like you were getting ready to go into qualification and then it kind of stopped and then you didn't know where you were for a period of time? Yeah, look, look, I mean, look, the question mark um, has been there and it is going into next year as well, like, you know, and that's just the, the times we live in. Um, but we were lucky enough, um, you know, before probably the under-17 season started, we actually played England under-16 and it was Tom Elms' first games um, down in the RSC and that allowed us to have a look at this group towards the end of the under-16 year. Um, in two games and two really top class games against England um, and then after that then we uh, we had assessments and so on and you know look the big thing I suppose this year was again 18 months without seeing these players we would have seen them in under 15 schools and under 16 program um, and all that was gone like so um, you know a big player identification kind of program had to take place um, for us to, to start to, to look at the selection for squads and um, so we three assessments I think in July and August and then we played Northern Ireland I think 28 players Played against Northern Ireland in August, um, two games, uh, one in, in Dublin, one in Belfast. Again, gave us an opportunity to look at a lot of players um, and in, in, in international football and, and, and so on. There were two very, very good games. Um, and then uh, we played Portugal um, over in, in uh, Lisbon. And that was really, you know, top class games again, like lost 1-1-1, one, 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 um, but really set us up for the qualifiers um, in October in Norway. You you've, you mentioned the talent identification process there, which is it's really interesting because your squad in particular has a really kind of wide range to it in terms of you've got girls who are playing at the very top level of the Women's National League, then you've got girls kind of, you know, in, in the lower tiers, the 17th and 19th League, then you've got girls kind of outside that system, like Eva Kelly, for example, with St. Patrick's and Carlo, or girls from Sion Swift and stuff like that as well. So it, it's, a, it's a really kind of wide range that you have to cover. Yeah, big time, like, you know, and, and, and like the biggest thing is like, you know, you can't afford to miss a player like so. So you have to to uh, to be everywhere and see everything and see players in their environment and so on. And, um, you know, even outside of football, I think we've got players um, doing the junior cert and the leaving cert like in the group. Like so that even has its dynamics as well because you're going away for times and so on. So, yeah, like, I mean, the player ID is is um, is a tough one and it really was tough this year. But, uh, you know, lucky enough, like and even as is like I'm. Um, I mean, we went to Portugal and uh, a player came in on standby and ended up scoring Heidi Mackin um, in our second game. And now she's part of the squad. Like, so players have have progressed and so on as well. Like, um, so it's uh, it's been really good. So, yeah, like, I mean, you know, it's been great to see some of the players progress on to senior football. Um, you know, the likes of Abby Larkin, obviously, this year done very well with Shells and, and so on. And then there's obviously players like Slicks and Michaela Lawrence, who won the under-17 player of the year in our squad. And then we have players then as well that are, I think we have eight players um, over the year so far that are actually still eligible next year for the under-17s. Like, so that shows like, um, the, you know, the quality in the group and the quality in the group next year that are currently in with Tom. Um, so, you know, really is a lot of really top players coming through, like, and it's, uh, it's great to see. And as part of that process, it's obviously international football, it is about results, but it's all about development of players ultimately as well. So you working with Tom at the 16s, Tom coming in to assist you with the 17s as well. You working with Dave Connell with the 19s, Dave working with Vera with the with the seniors. It has a natural flow to it. As I say, like Abby Larkin can go from your squad to go invited to the senior squad and train with them in their most recent camp. Vera's had a look at her, you know, possibly next year she might might get a shot, like, you know, because she is such a talented player. In the same way, you might lose players to Dave, Dave might lose players to Vera. But that's part of the process. Yeah, like, I mean, sometimes people don't even notice as well. Jesse Stapleton is actually eligible for the women's under-17s as well, like, you know. So, um, you know, we didn't have her at all this year, like, you know. But again, another, uh, you know, um, huge potential player, like, you know. So, uh, yeah, like, I mean, you know, why we uh, we want to progress and do well and so on and so forth. Like, again, it's important to put the players where they're being... Uh, they're being challenged the most, like, and um, you know that's that's happened, and and you know you've seen the Avian Clancy and 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 so on move up, and and the Ellen Malloy's and Jesse Stapleton and so on, and Abby Larkin has been in around seniors and home based, a number of players have been in as well, like, so, you know, ultimately, 
um, you know, it's senior success is what we all want and, and want to see, uh, you know, getting to World Cups and Euros and so on and so forth. And if we can help that along the way, obviously, you know, if we qualified for Euros, wouldn't that be a massive experience as well for players like, you know, going up into senior football? Like, so um, it's all part of the process. But yeah, development is, is number one and, and giving them the greatest environment that they can get to, to, to reach their potential. Yeah, and it, it's an important point, isn't it? Because that can be the making of players in many ways. If you look back to 2010, all King squad that got to the finals of the under 17s, and some of the girls in that squad have gone on to unbelievable things Denise O'Sullivan, Megan Campbell, Rihanna Jarrett, Claire Shine. And then you look at Dave Connell's squad in 2014, to 19s, and then 2015, 17s, Dave Bell again, Czech Republic a couple of years later. Those girls have all, the trend has been. The majority of those players have gone on to better things in, in in their careers. You've obviously taken the first step with that. Didn't the three qualifiers in Norway, you topped the group. Um, so you've you've seen the players come together and click, and they now know that they can get results at this level. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, that was a really important one. Was you know you know when when we we finished our game against Bulgaria and and we knew we were qualified and so on. Like you know, I mean, in 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 the. The, the chat after with the players it was like well now we're going for Norway like and that has to be the case like you know Norway are obviously you know in women's football would be a superpower I think they're, they're ranked fourth or fifth in, in Europe in under 17 like and would always be at Euros and, and, and competing but um you know we need to get that mentality now that we can go and compete and beat these teams and, and beat them in Norway as well like you know and you know I mean even the game as it went like you know we were one up for for nearly forty five minutes. We went just one up before half time, like and and then to um for Norway to equalise, like I think in maybe the eighty nine minute, like and you know obviously that would put them top of the group. But then for our girls to come back and 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 kind of have that never say die and and um Jai Ralph to score the winner, uh, I think in maybe the ninety second or third minute, like it was just unbelievable, like you know and it's memories and moments like that obviously that will uh will stand to them going forward now as well, like and yeah absolutely, and it shows you the team. Or the squad uh, ethos there as well, but Joy coming off the bench and you know practically first touch of the game, she puts it in the back of the net and like that's important. That's going to be important for you going into the the next round of qualifying now as well, isn't it? In March. Yeah, massive. Like and you know I've said to the players as well. Like you know you know we we've started an assessment process now as well now in in between like you know, most of those players coming in and and so on. So you know we have to have that mentality like yeah I want to get into the first eleven, but first I want to get into the squad and and that real competitiveness. Um, it's very much a family environment and. And, and a really good um you know group and so on but but we have to have that competitiveness that that squads are very difficult to get onto and so on and, and when you do get your place like you know it's well earned like so um you know that they, they really have that mentality now like that come i think we're playing switzerland in in, in february in spain like um you know that that would that squad is, is, is going to be very difficult to get on like and everyone realizes that like you know yeah and then obviously after you have that it is the qualifiers and it's the next stage to audition to get to the finals and um you will be hosting it in, in Ireland as well which is it has to be a bonus I suppose yeah like I mean you know I think it's uh it, it's massive for us like you know we're we're obviously the first seed um you know we should be favorites to 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 top the group now and that's a little bit of pressure going in and you know you're playing at home you're playing but like that's this is these are all experiences now that are, are super for the girls like you know hopefully you know to be allowed to have crowds there and so on and um you know that's that's what you want you want to give them them things that yeah there is a little bit of pressure going into the game and and so on and so forth but um you know they're the moments that will will make players and and really get them ready to go into environments like um you know playing for the senior team and and and, and so on and you know trying to qualify for major tournaments you know james great start uh good 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 positive year for you and uh, best of luck next year great thanks Gar.